Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to be your host tonight for our Women at HHL's alumni talk. First of all, I'm really excited to see so many of you online here. And I hope that you have been actually also doing well during these turbulent times. And uh, we are very happy to have this virtual talk today uh, that gives you an insight in our uh, in the career path of four wonderful alumni from our HHL Business School, Man School of Management, sorry, <laughs> my name. Um, I, yeah, I'm leading the Women at HHL Initiative. My name is Silke Petkus. Um, and before getting started, I would like to first give you an idea of our tonight's agenda. Um, in the first hint, I will shortly hand over to Martina Behrmann, the director of our career department, who will give you a short overview of, uh, of their work and what their work entails. Um, I will then introduce the speakers tonight and provide them with the opportunity, of course, to share their experiences and wisdom with you. Um, subsequently, we will have a Q&A session in the end where you can raise any questions uh, that you might have. Um, just briefly from an organizational point of view, um, please make sure that your microphones are muted and it would be nice if you could turn on the camera so that we can actually somehow interact with our audience. Um, I will now hand over to Martina Behrmann to introduce HHL's Career Development Department. Mm -hmm. So, hello everybody. Welcome to this evening, yes, which gives you insights into HHL alumni career path. I'm really excited too. And yes, um, our mission as a career development team is to help you to attain a rewarding and also fulfilling career. That means um, our office cover much more than just career management also it's also about personal growth yes uh, especially for our speakers uh, yes i think in the last years uh, much has happened here at hhl, at HHL. You may not know these offers, but yes, we always start with self-assessment and self-leadership is a hot topic. And I think this evening it's really a great opportunity uh, for our students to point the direction for their own career uh, development by learning from really positive female role models. And yes, dear students, um, feel free after the event to contact our teams if you have questions, especially about companies uh, which are promoting, especially women. We have long lists uh, about uh, companies which are promoting um, women uh, collected by the University of Applied Sciences in Lübeck. So I think uh, the right environment is also a very important factor. But now I hand over again to Silke, who will facilitate this evening. <laughs> Thank you, Martina. Um, very insightful input, especially for our current students, of course. Um, yeah, before I introduce our amazing lineup of speakers tonight, I quickly also want to take the opportunity to uh, introduce the Women at HHL Initiative, what it's all about. Um, we actually, we want to, it's an, in an initiative led by me and we have a core team of doctoral students normally. And we want to provide a place for empowerment, um, exchange and personal development for all female students, but also employees and alumni, of course, of HHL. And we want to yeah, get them connected to support each, uh, each other via events like talk like these today, or also um, social events where we just um, like get togethers to, to, to get closer to each other and get to know also um, like not just uh, the students within from one course that know each other, but also to get in contact with all any other kind of uh, yeah, students, alumni, and also female employees. Um, 
Yeah, now I'm very delighted to introduce our experts tonight. Um, I would like to quickly share my screen so that you have an overview of our speakers. Um, so that's my screen. I hope you can see it all. Um, our speakers tonight uh, and HHL alumni, of course, are First of all, Fatima El Khatib, who is senior manager in research uh, currently in Dubai. Secondly, we have Caroline Schäfer from Volkswagen Consulting in the position as project manager and co lead of the digital practice group. Third, we have Connie Wuppermann, who is a managing partner and CFO of Palero Capital, which is a, a private equity fund. And thirdly is uh, Stefanie Tjolko, who is Senior Strategy Consultant at IBM. And um, we have the wonderful woman here, so <laughs> I would actually like them to introduce themselves and uh, with uh, to give more information about the job that they are doing, about um, the position and the company, if, if, if background information is needed and um, how did they get to their job. So yeah, maybe in this order I just presented, maybe Fatima, you would like to start to present. You, you're you still on mute, Fatima. Yeah, sorry, okay. Yeah. Hi, hi everyone, good evening. Uh, this is Fatima, thank you Silke, and thank you Martina for the great opportunity. I am very happy to take part of this uh, casual fun, informative talk. Uh, so um, I'm Fatima. I am a market researcher and a market intelligence expert since the past, for the past 14 years, maybe. Uh, so my job has always been related to consumers' insights, market intelligence, um, consumer behavior, um, you name it. Uh, I do a lot. I, I do deal with a lot of data uh, coming my way from the different streams of, uh, like of information, uh, some formal, some informal, big data analysis, uh, media monitoring, you name it. Um, my job relies mainly on math and statistics, but there is a, an artistic part of it too, because it does take a little bit of experience and a good eye to be able to read within the data and be able to come up with insightful information and actionable recommendation for the business strategies or the product development strategies or the marketing strategies. I started in 2006 and started agency side, client side, came into HHL, did my MBA and uh, I'm class M10. So I graduated 2011. Uh, it was a fantastic experience. I cannot tell you how much it changed me uh, professionally and personally. And uh, from that point on, I moved uh, to Belgium. I worked in a research agency, research consulting agency back to Dubai, and now I am between Dubai and Canada. So this is it. Um, I've worked on all of the markets. I've, I've been based in Africa for a while. I've worked in the, on European markets, and now I'm trying to explore the North American consumers. So uh, very challenging, uh, very interesting, uh, people-based as much as math-based, and I'm, I'm very, very proud to be taking uh, this path in my life and this career. That's it. Thank you, Fatima. Very, very insightful. Really, really different uh, countries and a lot of movement apparently in your current job. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, um, do you want to continue? Yes. Um, thank you also again um, for having me uh, tonight. I'm, I'm super excited and also I'm happy to share my experiences. Um, I'm from MSC 11. Um, I studied at HHL from April 2014 until um, January 2016. And um, then afterwards, I um, yeah, started first of all at um, Bain and Company. You probably all know them um, as an associate consultant. Um, and then after nine months, um, I, I quit at Bain and um, started again um, in an internal consultancy, um, Fox One Consulting. This was in April 2017. 
Um, I started as a um, consultant and now, um, as, as already said, I'm a project manager and also um, yeah, the co-lead of um, the digital practice group. Maybe shortly a bit about Volkswagen Consulting uh, so that you can yeah, get to know better um, what, who we are and what we actually do. Um, we are an internal consultancy, so we only do projects within the Volkswagen group. We are not doing projects for other OEMs or suppliers. It's like only Volkswagen Group, but all brands within the Volkswagen Group, like also Seat, Skoda, Audi, Porsche, everything. And um, what is also um, important to know, we are not an own entity or something, like not an own legal entity. We are one department within the Volkswagen Group and we belong to the um, HR department. And um, so all my projects I'm working with, um, yeah, say it like this, I'm working with colleagues, basically. My clients, they're also at the same time, my colleagues. Um, yes. And um, yeah, we are structured internally um, according to functions. So my business, the, uh, business unit is um, the consulting brand uh, for um, HR, IT and um, yeah, finance. And we also have other functions, um, yeah, looking for sales and mobility, or maybe also um, quality procurement stuff like this. So really oriented um, according to functions. Um, but our practice groups, um, they are cross-functional units. Um, so we have in this practice groups, I'm I'm having like I'm having a team of say around 16 to 18. Um, yeah, consultants um, from all of those cross um, from all of the functions, and we are working on um, yeah, cross-functional projects for digitalization in our practice group. Um, this may be a bit about Volkswagen Consulting, so that you get to know um, a bit better um, what we are doing and what we are not doing. And um, yeah, my focus areas are um, consulting of um, the HR function and also the IT function. And of course, everything um, with, with respect to digitalization of processes. Um, yeah, that's also basically my project experience, lots of digitalization projects. Um, yeah. Thank you, Caroline. Um, I'm, I think we will, I mean, we will talk a bit, a lot of more about what exactly uh, this job brings with you. But um, yeah, I would like then to continue with Connie for her introduction. Hello, good evening to everyone. Um, thanks also for having me tonight. Um, my name is Connie Wuppermann. I'm actually an HHL alumni um, from K-16. So I graduated in 2004. That was the time before the master and bachelor system. So the old days <laughs> where we still had a diploma um, handed out at HHL. Um, I started my career in investment banking because my focus at HHL was finance, so that made a lot of sense at that time. Um, and after a few years um, at an investment um, bank, I went into private equity, um, worked there mainly on transactions as well. And then in 2010, so a good 10 years ago, um, I founded uh, Palero Capital with two partners. Um, the three of us are still working together um, and we have split our task a bit on the industrial um, evolution side. So I'm responsible as a CFO for everything that has to do with finance and financing um, within our fund. So I work from every portfolio company upwards to the fund and uh, manage all the fund flows that we have there. Um, I do all the financing that we have on operational level and on the other side coming from investment banking, I obviously still do um, the M&A side so I'm responsible to get the with another partner as a, as a co-head responsible for all the M&A activity that we have so buying companies into our portfolio, but also selling them. Um, on the private side, I'm mother of two wonderful children, um, and that keeps me busy all, the, all day. <laughs> We can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, nice. Uh, Stephanie, would you maybe yes, repeat sure. around? So, hi, my name is uh, Stephanie Tsiolko or Steffi. I'm happy to call me Steffi. I'm a senior strategy consultant at IBM. I started at IBM four years ago uh, when I was actually conducting my 
uh, studies at HHL. So I was a part-time student at HHL and we have a cooperation between HHL and IBM called Master at IBM. So back then I was already working as a full-time consultant at IBM in Munich and was traveling to Leipzig to do my studies there. And um, yeah, for those of you who might not know, so IBM Consulting is not an internal consultancy like Volkswagen Consulting is, but we have only in, uh, external clients. So we have um, actually very big companies ex as external clients. We have around of 100, uh, 100,000 consultants worldwide. So um, we are helping our clients to accomplish their digital transformation journeys, starting from designing digital strategies, but also executing those digital strategies um, to make it a little bit more tangible maybe. So we have projects where we apply artificial intelligence to improve the decision-making process of our clients, or we have strategy projects where we um, yeah, create multi, um, multi-channel strategies for, for a retailer, for example. And uh, our consultants or the skills of our consultants range from technical consultants, but uh, also important to say business and strategy consultants like uh, I am. Okay, thank you very much. So I hope you all got a good overview of the, of the different uh, areas that are here presented today. I'm very happy actually that we have so different views. We have the internal consulting, we have the external consulting, we have the finance and research view. So um, yeah, I'm also then happy to go further and to start with our discussion. Maybe fun, one note first, as mentioned already earlier during my introduction, we have a subsequent Q&A session later, but please feel free already now or during the talk to type in your questions in the chat function. Um, yeah, um, obviously, I mean, you have been so successful businesswoman during your career and after your HHL or my, maybe even also before, but especially now we see what you achieved. And um, looking back at this career path that you made, um, was it always some kind of long-term vision that you had from your career, like, like a plan that you followed step by step? Or um, were, were there situations that um, you had to adjust somehow, something you would like to share with us, um, some, some story or something that you say, well, this is actually something that um, I have planned or not. And um, I mean, apparently it worked out quite well in any ways, but maybe it might be interesting for our audience just to, to discuss on that point. Sure. Shall I, shall I start, Silke? Please, Fatima, you can start, of course. So um, it's, not, it's not a long-term plan as in set in stone, but it's also, it's not a no plan at all. So it's somewhere in the middle, right? Like you follow your passion throughout, but you do adjust. So uh, for example, I like market research, I like uh, consumer intelligence, I knew that from the beginning. But of course, like the steps, what, whatever opportunities come your way, you have to like adjust accordingly. So um, as long as you do something you like, uh, for example, joining HHL was not planned per se, but it was an, an amazing segue, let's put it this way. And uh, it added a lot to my uh, career and my uh, uh, professional development. And also personal life come in between and you have to adjust and you have to in position versus the other. But you cannot go totally unplanned, but you and be ready to adapt. That's in a, in a nutshell. Yeah. I think Fatima mentioned an important um, point when she said, um, you, you found your passion and then you followed it because for me, for instance, it, it, it was after my A-levels, I didn't have a clear plan yet because I haven't found my passion and I didn't really discovered yet my skills. So I really worked on that. I started studying management. I got in a startup environment and really found my passion there. So the passion for startups, for technology, for innovation. And then in the next step, it was clear for me okay, now I can make a plan. I made a plan to go to HHL because it's so startup focused. I made a plan to go to IBM to have the innovation and technology side, but I 
also think besides having a plan, it's also very important to give yourself time to discover your strengths and passion and um, the plan can still follow after that. Yeah. And I think one further point that Fatima made is the flexibility to adjust that to opportunities that come your way. It might be, in my case, I knew the, the final sort of picture which I wanted to get to, but obviously the way needed to just come into places with the different opportunities that I had. And it was, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to have my own company. I wanted to take business decisions in the way I do today. But obviously this is nothing where you say, okay, I have just completed my A-levels. Where do I go now? But it is a path that you take and there's opportunities left and right side um, and you take a decision and sometimes you discover it's the wrong decision and you need to have the flexibility to just turn around and say, okay, that was not it. I do it differently now um, to actually get to the point where I want to get to. Yeah, I, I, for, for me, it was, um, yeah, I, I am, I'm, I'm totally with you when you say like, you have to find your passion. Also, you, you, you have to basically don't yeah, let yourself down by, by some kind of, decisions that may not be perfect or something like this. Um, maybe when I started HHL, I was super, super critical about consultancies, really, really critical. I said to myself, I, I'm not going into consulting um, because I, I came um, from a corporate environment. I had an integrated um, degree program at, at Miele. Um, and, and during my time at Miele, we had um, several consulting um, firms in-house in, in and they were pretty much about cost cutting and um, yeah, reducing people. So I was rather negative with respect to consulting. And um, yeah, during my time at HHL, you, you basically get to know all those, all those firms. Um, I did an internship at, at AT Kearney and th then somehow you find out um, that maybe your first impression was wrong and consulting is not that bad as expected. It's rather exactly what you want to do. Um, and, and, and as already told you, um, I, I first of all started at Bain and then after my nine months I quit. Um, of course, it was not easy for me to say after nine months, okay, it's, it's, it was not the right decision for me. It was somehow maybe it, it, it is not it, um, it's not Bain. It was, it was not the, my, my experience, um, but, but then I also think that it is uh, good that I made this um, yeah, experience um to learn more about myself and what i really want and what i'm really good at um so i, I think it it was not planned but it was exactly what i what i what i wanted it, it's okay for me yeah so um apparently i mean it's um we we hear that passion is definitely uh, very important but um it's also that uh, all of you actually had to find their path out, even though maybe having a long-term, let's say, view where to go, like the way how to go was not really defined. And what would you say was essential or, or helpful for you to find this path or uh, what, what helped you shaping this path actually to achieve your current um, career or your current position where you are actually happy to having found your passion that you can pursue um, your uh, yeah things that you like and uh, be, be be successful in what you're doing I think there is something interesting about like when I hear the all of the ladies talking is that none of them accepted um, a predisposition about any company or any job. So whether you prefer a consultancy or you don't, or whether you want to be an entrepreneur or you don't, this is something that is totally up to you and totally up to your set of skills and your education further, right? So for example, for uh, Steffi, she wanted something that is related to technology and um, 
and, uh, and so she found the mix between HHL and IBM and she didn't take it with a prejudice. She did not say, I want to work for X company because it looks good or it feels good. She actually did her choice based on whatever she thought her skills were. And that's important. It's not a it's not a frame that you're trying to fit yourself into, okay? It's actually what you want. And then you see which, which opportunity can fit your frame, but of course be flexible, like don't be very rigid. So what, it's okay to leave a big company for, for an entrepreneurial experience. It's perfect, actually, I've done it, it's amazing, okay? And it's okay to say at the beginning, I don't want a consultancy, but then discover that the consultancy is really something you would like it's also perfect consultancies are they include really smart people so so it's also okay to change your mind along the way um as long as you are happy to go to work every day i guess yeah yeah for me like because you were asking uh how i came to the view of, of, of plan then for me it was also talking um with people who know my strengths who know me mm -hmm. um and then get some advice for them but on the other hand also to because we were talking about passion and skills also to get to know me personally better to reflect on my skills to reflect on my passion and then cr to create that plan and at the end it was also always kind of um listening to my gut feeling that is actually the best compass I have. Yeah, I I would also agree for that. Um, yeah, and anyone, Connie or Caroline, do you want to add something or shall we? I, I can just totally agree. Like, oh. No, go Caroline. <laughs> I, I just say, um, yeah, it's, it's really about gut feeling. Listen to yourself, listen to your strengths and don't listen to what other people say, um, especially if someone is critical like, um, you, you can't uh, change jobs or so after nine months. Yes, you can. It's not a big yeah. deal. Why, why not? Yes, you can. Have to. Yeah, I totally agree. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the same situation when I was young. Uh, uh, I uh, didn't feel very comfortable at Bayer. And uh, I wanted to, uh, to leave them after three months. And my whole family told me, you can't quit such a... Uh, amazing employer, but I did it and it was the best decision I could make. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean, for those, I, I think the point is that once you know that, um, that, that you took a decision and if it's to go somewhere else or if it's to stay, you just should, should, should do what your gut feeling yeah. is is in which direction it is pointing so um yeah no i would also definitely agree to that but um i mean we are having a successful women in our round um in general considering the low representation of in female in leadership positions in general just um what kind of what is your general experience of being a woman in business and also taking some leadership position um do you have any takeaways or any kind of um, yeah stories you would like to share with our audience on that maybe connie you want to start first yeah i mean it's always when you introduced us you said you want to listen to our wisdom and that it just feels a bit strange because I don't feel like I have wisdom to share, but I have experience to share on my own. No. Um, but I think the most important thing I've learned um, in my career is that even though I'm working in a job with, I don't know, 90, 95% male representation, it is okay to be a woman and you don't have to try to be a man. Um, and I see that often in the beginning of female careers that they try to be really tough and they try to, I don't know, they try to mimic a male behavior. And I think that is wrong in so many places. <laughs> and it is, it is not the key to success. You are a woman and you can do everything. You can achieve everything that you want to. You have to work for it, obviously, as everyone else has to. But then it is not a gender issue. Although, yeah, yeah. and I think the discussion on diversity shows that and the 
low representation of females in leading positions shows that it is an issue to to do it all, to have a family life, to be a loving wife, to meet your friends all the time and be jiggly and to um, still be successful. That is something that is stressful if you feel that you have to do it on your own. So my advice would be take help if someone offers you help and be a woman, just be true to yourself. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think, I, um, sorry, sorry, Steph, you go ahead. Thanks. Yeah, I completely agree with uh, you, Connie. So this, um, what you said in the beginning, not adapting towards the characteristics of a man, but just really staying and being um, who you are. And I really made a good experience in the beginning of my career at IBM when I was just a master's student uh, starting my career then um, there and I was closely working with an executive partner of us and he always had um, um, the point of view that when we're discussing a solution for a client we have to have a diverse team sitting on the uh, on the table so there was an executive partner there was a master student there was an intern uh, we had international people so it's really about diversity and at that point, it was important that everybody had their own opinion and own, own um, views because this led us to getting the best solution for our clients because our clients are also diverse. And when we try to think customer centric and when we try to get also in the head of our customer or end customer of our customers, we have to think diverse. And that's why, yeah, staying to yourself, your characteristics is actually something you can really provide uniqueness to the table and a very unique point of view. Hmm. Fatima, do you want to add something to that? Actually, I wanted to build a bit on uh, on uh, Connie and now Steffi's points. Um, being to yourself is really what you have to do. It's everybody's everybody's mandate to succeed. I mean, men or women, if you try to fake or try to mimic something, you will not succeed no matter what. And then I'm a mom of three kids, okay? And they're really small kids. Uh, they're all under four years old. I, I, it's, it's difficult. Most of the times I don't get to sleep, but, but it's fine. It's a phase, you know, and you juggle things. And Yes, there is a pressure on women in leadership positions because you have this family side also that is like a big burden of it, a bit part of it is on you. But we're equipped to do that. Multitasking is in our genes, right? Like we, we know how to do that. So it's not a matter of gender, really. It's just a matter of organization, prioritization, uh, time management, all of those skills you can either learn by experience or by education. okay so you choose whatever whatever suits you but it's not a matter of gender it's not a matter of somebody who is more um, um, intelligent or more capable not at all it's uh, on the contrary it's a bit um, we're a little bit more if I allow myself to say a bit more skilled in the sense of being able to juggle so many fronts on them so it's, it's an advantage if anything that sounds actually quite good <laughs> good news I would say um uh, is there, um, do you have anything in mind that might be helpful to, to get more women in these leadership positions to, yeah, to, in Germany, I would say to, to find a suitable counteraction to that. I know in other countries, uh, we see that there are higher percentages uh, for women being in leadership positions, but do you have any, like, yeah, ideas, what you personally think might be helpful to get more women up the, the career ladder? And Stephanie, maybe you have an idea on that? Yeah, it's a tough question. I mean, there are so many facets on it. Um, so I think from a com perspective or working in a large corporate organization um, for sure the uh, organization has to build up a culture which is like open for everybody mm -hmm. not only speaking to um, women but where everybody feels welcome and also sees a 
place and a position for himself or herself. This also goes along, for instance, with um, flexible working modes, like, um, for instance, what some might not imagine, but we um, have part-time consultants who manage to um, have their family, either if it's a male or a female um, colleague, but are only working 50% or work in a tandem with another part-time consultant. And then um, the second part, I just forgot what I wanted to say. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was about um, having role models. So I think this is also very important for um, women so you can, because I mean, in my position, I currently experience that we have quite a lot of women in leading positions mm -hmm. so I can um, really approach them and see how they go along with their work with their work-life balance how they approach different things how they live their jobs and how they manage their family life but I think in other companies those role models might not exist or maybe like even students don't have access to those role models and I think this is something what is really important to having access to those role models and also for us who might be a role model to share our experience and also to encourage um, other females. Yeah, that's true. Maybe Caroline from the, um, well, internal consulting view, is it different that your company you're working in? Um, I mean, we also have, um, yeah, I wouldn't say programs or something, like we have an initiative for, for women um, at, um, Fox One Consulting, it is called FemConnect. So where we um, yeah, share our experiences informally at um, say dinners. We also have um, yeah, talks with uh, managers um, or female managers um, of, of the Fox One group. And sometimes um, if we have uh, the, the money, um, we also have special um, trainings for, for um, female um, consultants. Um, and yes, I think this is of course helpful but one topic, which is somehow for me always, um, yeah, it, it is a broader topic in, in my point of view. I think society as a whole needs somehow to change and not only the companies. I mean, it's the first step to do with something on, on company um, perspective, but I think society as a whole needs to change also um, how we view um, yeah, women. Um, we are somehow taught um, maybe from our parents, maybe also from, from, from um, other perspectives to be kind, to be nice, to somehow, yeah, be, sh I, I wouldn't say be shy, but, but like, yeah, you to not be as strong as, as, as men. Um, and, and I'm not quite sure whether this is always good to be kind and nice. And I think somehow you just have to make a point. And um, even if there are people who, who don't like it, that you may make a point, but it's, it's important that you just do it for yourself. Yeah, definitely. Um, Caroline, if I remember well, you also had quite a like, tough situation in your company, like uh, getting into this digital area. Maybe you want to share a little bit on that? Um, yeah, I, I, can, I can share it. Um, I mean, um, you, you introduced me as a co-lead of the digital practice group. And I'm, I'm, I'm pretty honest with you. Um, I'm not the co-lead of the digital practice group because someone asked me to be the co-lead of the practice group. No one asked me. It was the, the typical situation. They said like, oh, we want to have a digital practice group. So um, there we have a senior guy who is a um, senior project manager, has already experience, uh, lots of experience in consulting, et cetera. And um, he should be the, the lead of the practice group. And um, Carolyn, um, we would be super happy if you just be some kind of member of that practice group. Um, and I think in that point, um, probably you, you would just be happy and say like, okay, yes, I'm a member of the practice group. This is the normal reaction they, they just like expected. But I just said to my boss, um, if you want me in that practice group, um, then give me some kind of um, yeah, cool position in that group, like um, co-lead or, I don't know, just like be creative, give me a special position in that practice group. Or um, if, you, if you don't do this, um, then I'm not part of that practice group. You can't force me. Um, it is a voluntary initiative. So either you want me in a practice group and then be creative, um, offer me something, 
or um, you you just be fine that I'm not part of that practice group. And in the end, I mean, in the end, I'm now the co-lead of that practice group. Um, but it, it's not that someone asked me. It's just because I said my I, I voiced my opinion, and um, yeah, yeah. Now I think there are like two two very important aspects on that because one is the the visibility with like some, as you said, some kind of title that should come up, up with or something that makes it visible what your position is. And the second is actually the point that you that you make your point that you um, went on this discussion and that you also, um, well, proposed not to being part of this group, um, which is quite a powerful um, step you took actually. I would say. Yeah. And I mean, what could have, uh, your boss could have just said no, but he wouldn't have fr thrown you out. So I think it's very important to just be brave. And really, when you have the feeling I deserve this and why he didn't nominate me to step up and ask for it. Absolutely. I once worked in a company, I'm not going to name it just to be on the confidential side, but um, we had um, two heads of the research uh, unit for the whole region and actually it was uncommon to have two heads it, there's usually one head and the boss could not actually the women with the woman was much more qualified than the man but because just she was a woman and he knew that she would have a family eventually etc he, he didn't make the decision and he kept them both actually in competition constant competition against each other to kind of like try to get one of them to be tired maybe and leave or something like that but eventually uh, I know that uh, the woman uh, voiced it out and uh, she was extremely blunt and he could not afford to lose her her skills because she was extremely skilled actually and he named her the, the head and at some point you just need to stop accepting uh, um, any any less of a, of a good treatment just because you are labeled as a woman. But speaking of role models, uh, Steffi, I mean, she was um, she was a great role model. She she got it and she really deserved it. But yeah, I, I mean, there are a lot of situations like that where you have to put your foot down. Okay, um, Connie, is there something maybe from your position? I mean, you're a CFO and from what I know, the only female like in your uh, senior positions. Uh, one out of three, so it's yeah, well, thirty percent plus one third, which is fine. <laughs> no, but um, maybe I want to add another aspect because I am also an employer to many people, and I often have discussions with uh, young professionals, male and female alike. And what I experience is that the male young professionals often ask for positions and tasks yeah. to do where they're not yet fully skilled for they still need a year or two years development. They, so they always ask for steps ahead and which I've never experienced with a female um, employee yet. They always, if they look at the list, what is required for you um, to be able to take this position, they always look through and there's the tiniest thing they can't do yet. They wouldn't apply because they are like, well, I not, do not fully um, fill the profile yet. Whereas a man, they just look at, I, it seems to me, it's a bit obviously blunt, but um, they look at the title and say, yeah, that's what I wanted to do in 10 years anyway. So I do apply now and I don't even do top one to three yet, but I can learn all of that. And I think that is a bit of, that is something that you can actually mimic from men. Take the courage. Um, don't wait till you're actually already there for 10 years, and but no one has actually looked at you, but take the courage and try things. And the worst thing that can happen is that someone says no, but then you know where you're standing and you just ask someone else, you'll find someone that says yes. So no yeah. worries. That's what we often experience during our coaching sessions, yes, that our male students say, yeah, I will make it, I want to, to join a top consultancy even if the grades are not <laughs> fitting and yes our female students they ask themselves 
am I good enough always? And yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's a big point. Mm. Um, Caroline already started talking a little bit about, uh, well, internal programs to for, for, for women or, uh, I mean, a lot of companies have strategies or programs to get, uh, to get either be, to be more attractive for, for women. So to increase the, uh, the people applying for or women applying for jobs in that company, but on the same time, of course, also to keep women in the company. So both is quite important for a lot of companies and it, they make it quite transparent to the outside, uh, what yeah. they are investing in that. Um, Caroline already talked a little bit about um, about Volkswagen, what they are doing. Um, what about maybe IBM? Um, are they proposing something to the to the employees or to candidates? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we actually have really a lot of initiatives, and we um, yeah drive the topic of diversity um, already since centuries, I would say. So this is nothing new for us, mm -hmm. uh, but it's something which is really integral to our culture. And maybe this is also why I feel so comfortable in, um, in my position. And yeah, for instance, to just name some, um, some programs for external interests, we have um, a network which is called the female um, IBM female network. They organize uh, several events, for instance, and bring together women. Currently, we have an event series called Consulting Experience, where interested or oh, yeah, students who are interested can um, can see other female IBMers talking about their consulting projects. But also internally, we have um, a program which is uh, quite interesting called Women in Leadership. And in the beginning, it was designed only for women. So um, women supporting women, having doing like um, um, shadowings um, and, and having several trainings. But then some men said, OK, we also want <laughs> something like that. And what we have done at the end is we brought everybody together. It's still called women in leadership, but men can also participate. And we say, okay, it's about diversity. So it's not only about women, but it's also about men understanding the point of views of women and the other way around. And this is actually um, our way to success. Mm -hmm. And do you see it actually? I don't know at IBM, is it uh, successful about uh, to have more women in these uh, higher positions? Yeah, I mean, I actually have the feeling that, I mean, from numbers perspective, I don't know, it's 25, 30% something, but um, I see women on all levels and especially at IBM, you might think of it's IT technology. Uh, is it something what, um, is it something typical for women? But I see a lot of women also in our senior positions, executive partners, and uh, we have two women in our um, board. So at least for myself, uh, I'm happy to have a lot of role models in my company. Sounds good, definitely. Um, Connie, is the, as you were also talking um, as, as an employer, so you, you are definitely doing interviews and talking to candidates, um, are candidates actually asking these kind of um, support? Are women asking for, well, is there some kind of community or something like that that is connecting or, or is, is this not at all like some point that they would discuss with you? In, well, I, in private equity, that is basically the arena I, I'm yeah. working in. I don't feel that this is asked for in a job interview it's mm -hmm. probably once you're in private equity obviously there is a few organizations um working on the, the female um networking um and getting females into career paths in private equity but i have not experienced that as part of the of a job interview saying that though i don't have many female job interviews either so it's not like I'm talking to tons of females that want to work in private equity. Most of them are male anyway, and, and they wouldn't ask for a female network either. Um, but so it is basically, we need a step before that basically to get women into private equity. 
is the first task so they can actually network there. But private equity is definitely a very, uh, yeah, male dominated, challenging, challenging, of course, but also very interesting um, world to work in. And mm -hmm. it has different um, facets to take, and uh, you get to know different. Well, if you have different portfolio companies, obviously you are not just working for one, but for different companies and get to know different views. Um, why don't you, why do you think is this for just as example, I mean, we could also talk about IT, for example, but is it not attractive to the candidates to go there or do they not know it? Or what do you think is the point? I, I think it depends a bit on the, on, well, in which area of private equity you would work at. Mm -hmm. It's usually something where you have been either a consultant before, if you are more into the operational side of private equity, or if you're on the fund side of private equity, you've been in investment banking. Mm -hmm. And if you look there, and in the, I came from investment banking and I was, during the time I was in Frankfurt, everyone knew me because I was one of, I don't know, 20 females in private uh, in investment banking. So everyone knows you. It's like a, uh, in Germany, you say it's like a bunter Hund mm -hmm. um, because everyone knows who you are because you're just this rare occasion. <laughs> um, and I, so from there, the source to go into private equity is limited for females in the first place. And then um, on the business side, if you're in consulting, I feel that many consulting firms are just a step further ahead in actually getting females to stay once they've reached a certain level. So the females don't want to go into private equity in an area where um, it is actually basically male dominated uh, quite a lot. But saying that, I love working there. <laughs> so it is really an interesting field. So everyone um, that wants to have a look at, I really encourage you, try working in spaces where today there's a lot of males because often, as Fatima said, females can bring something to the table that no one else can bring. And it is really rewarding working there. Thank you, thank you. I have to to this yeah, Fatima, Fatima. something I also thought because in research, it's maybe different than in that Actually, area. in research, it's yeah, it's mostly women who work in research and um, it's, it's Why? fun, let's put it this way. Uh, it's very detailed oriented, it's, it's very uh, people led, uh, so it's, you deal a lot with people rather, I mean, it's, yes, it, it is a lot of statistics and math at the background of it, but you have to deal with people, you have to be able to read people's minds in a scientific way. So, uh, and women are much more intuitive when it comes to that. So they find it fascinating. But interestingly enough, they, uh, the leaders in this industry are male. So you find like the whole team is female, but the, the, the manager is always male. Okay. And that's because um, either, either clients actually feel more comfortable that the end, let's say the final decision is finally taken by male, not by female. So the women can do all of the work, all of the hard work, but the final decision and the eagle eye has to be coming from a man. And the, my challenge, for example, is to push through all the way to the top because most of women kind of fall out of the wagon, like out of the wagon by the time they are, let's say, at, at um, director level, etc., they just fall out because they, they, they're, there's a huge competition with men and clients sometimes prefer to deal with men at that level rather than women. So the, my challenge is to say no. I mean, I worked so hard for 15, 20 years. I earned that director level. I earned that the VP level at this point and I can run my own company, let's put it this way, when it comes to research. And in this way, at the bottom, there is a system to keep women. So for example, Maternity leaves in some countries are actually better than others, or um, uh, nurseries, for example, are better than others. Or in some, for example, in Belgium, you cannot fire someone who's on maternity leave, which was kind of good. Also, the legislation could help. But at the top, no, it becomes really head to head with men, and it's really a skills and an assertiveness kind of a game. So. And maybe adding one point um, to this, what Fatima and Connie said, I think like for, I can say it now for IT, and I think it probably it counts also for private equity. I think there are many 
prejudices um, mm -hmm. for our roles. And they might have been true 20 or 50 years or maybe even 10 years ago, but so much changed. And um, yeah, I mean, we have to communicate this and make um, our females, female colleagues aware that it's changed and um, that there is now also a place for them. Definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, if you look back to your career um, and also for at the start of your career, um, is there anything you would advise to your former self or anything that you would have liked to make it difference in hindsight? Um, yeah, I would just maybe that each of you gives like one or two ideas. Uh, I mean, of course, to your career path, but uh, to our audience um, that each of you, each of you four can answer to that if it's possible. Maybe Caroline, you want to start? Um, yes, of, of course, um, but it's for me, it's pretty simple. I wouldn't do it any different or so. I mean, I, as already said, it the, the start maybe with, with Bain was not um, ideal, but it helped me a lot to um, yeah, learn more about myself. And yes, so I, I wouldn't do it differently. And I think also like um, decisions um, to study at HHL, stuff like this, it was all, it was, it was good. Yeah. Well, then it's, you should be then actually happy with it and everything because that's actually a good, good point. Um, yeah. Stefan, yeah. maybe you want to continue? Yeah, sure. I can continue. So the one thing I would tell my younger self is um, what we also discussed before is to be a little bit more brave maybe sometimes in situation so situations so when it comes to promotions but also for instance in business life when 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 you're sitting as a younger consultant in a mean, meeting but you have something to say you have the knowledge and you have the opinion to be also brave to say it and uh, to step up and um, not not say it and then in the end go home and be a little bit angry on yourself because you didn't have the courage to say it so this is one advice I would give my younger self and the second thing would be maybe to yeah take the, a little bit the stress and pressure out of this entire career planning yeah so as um, Caroline said there are no wrong steps she tried out Bain after nine months she recognized there's something which fits even better so really taking the stress and pressure out and not thinking there is something you can do wrong because everything you do is additional experience you gain. Yeah, yeah definitely. I mean, that sounds, sounds, sounds like a plan. I mean, it's, uh, it's always something, well, it's better to, or it's easier to talk about something that you have experienced and that you are now more, that you have gained more experience or wisdom, as I said in the beginning. But um, yeah, definitely. Um, Connie or Fatima, any of you to continue? Sure. Um, I would actually have it with Caroline. I wouldn't do anything particularly different because it was an opportunity at that time and I took it. Obviously, if you go back and start over again, different opportunities might come your way and you take different decisions. Um, and that is something, as I said before, you need this flexibility in yourself to judge every time um, whether you want to go left or right. And uh, the one thing that uh, Steffi just said, I'm still working on that every day to find the right balance on when to just leave it because it's not worth it um, or whether to take up the, the discussion and go into it. But that is for females and males as well. Um, um, one of my partners often told me, um, why are you getting so emotional now? It's like, I'm not getting emotional. I just disagree with you. And that is the difference. <laughs> um, and it's often just this, the, the courage to disagree if you have a different opinion. And, mm -hmm. but as I said, that is something I'm still working on. <laughs> so I think this is a lifelong journey. Thank you. Fatima. 
Well, I'm going to say something a bit more basic, which is have a little bit more fun, you know, like don't be too harsh on yourself. Um, career planning is very important, I understand, but so is everything else around you. So um, keep your eyes open, keep your opportunities open and learn. I mean, the thing, I, I'm, personally, learning is a motivation for me. Okay, so the only thing that I discovered later on is that when once I have a knowledge in my head, nobody can take it away from me. So that's really my wealth. Okay, and so it's important to keep learning and important to keep working on yourself, but also know your worth. Like, do not over criticize yourself. Like Martina was saying, I need to perfect this to get the job. No, it's not like that. Some of the things you can learn it as you go, and you're good enough for it. So don't keep doubting yourself all the time. Yeah, I think uh, a lot of people would agree with you, definitely. And I mean, if I should just take like from each of you just one word to sum up for our audience, it would be then like, we should definitely talk to people, we should be brave to take our decisions. Um, we should keep on learning during our career and also to, to, to yeah, to get try to get as much knowledge as we can actually and still in the end to follow our passion and take opportunities as they come um, but on the other side also take the courage to disagree and as Fatima uh, said actually to have fun in the end <laughs> with our decisions and our jobs obviously. Um, Yeah, I mean, from uh, our side, like the main questions, we tackled a little bit on, on, on yeah, on I think all the points we wanted to. Um, for the audience, please, if you have any questions from uh, any kind of, if it's like dedicated for one person or uh, to all of our four participants, please just write it in the chat. Um, it can also be like uh, specific for the companies or for the careers or um, any questions on that. Um, I would just read them out loud in case you have questions. Um, and I would like to take the first question that actually came in. And um, the question is like, um, what would you recommend or what do you recommend doing if the company itself is actually supportive but sometimes like partners like corporation partners or other people from outside the company they always want to talk to the male colleagues uh, when it comes to serious decisions so actually that um, yeah that it's not uh, that maybe they would not take your position serious in this case for example um What is your recommendation to this situation? What would you do? Well, there is the nice way and there is the not so nice way to deal with this. <laughs> you can be a little bit blunt with the person and make them and like share, like, like have your two cents and share what you know and then let them understand that you know what you're talking about. But usually companies, or at least established companies, whether big or small, uh, with a good uh, culture and value system, they wouldn't allow a client or an external partner or even an internal partner to have such an opinion. You know, So it's not really acceptable for the company culture to have somebody say, I want a male versus a female, because that is not simply acceptable for the company. So in most cases, it happened to me, I have to say, personally, a few times. Uh, sometimes when they see my hair curly, they think I'm not smart enough in between brackets. <laughs> okay, so so sometimes you have to come as like you have to deal with things like that that are as silly. But companies usually have a system to stop that from happening. And so, how did you react when this happened to you, Fatima? What was your reaction to that? I was not happy. I was not happy. I I did, I was I took the not so nice route. <laughs> I have to say. Because I was working on that account for a long time and they've been actually like um, benefiting from from the company resources and, and my personal involvement in the project. So it was not acceptable to just say that the CEO would prefer if a male would present, you know, it was just not acceptable for. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I just I was I was 
I, I made it clear and then I passed it on to the CEO of my company who actually made it clear also that according to the regulations of the company, this is not okay. Okay. Um, Connie, was there also a situation like that for you? I mean, you were together with two male founders. Um, maybe that could have been similar situation for you? It was um, because, especially because I was quite young when we started um, and it was often that when we entered the room everyone thought okay there is the boss and his assistant yeah. <laughs> and it, it as Fatima says it obviously it affects you <laughs> I mean no one can say well I don't care about this because you've worked for it and you deserve the place that you're in um, so you there's diff I deal with it differently in every situation, I guess. And I usually, I speak up, I say, um, when I introduce myself, I take particular note that I introduce my position. <laughs> so everyone realizes, okay, I'm not the assistant, but it's, it's days where it affects you more or less. And if I actually, in our office, <laughs> when I go and open the door to guests, they, everyone assumes I'm the assistant. If one of my partners goes and opens the doors, no one assumes that he is an assistant to anyone. So I don't go and open the door anymore. I don't answer phones for everyone else because I'm the girl that just does it. <laughs> um, so I, I adapted a bit to the situation. Um, I sometimes hear myself say, well, you can talk to my assistant to uh, get an appointment. It depends a bit on the situation. You have to um, show off your position sometimes, but in the end, in meetings, I'd rather do it the way that Fatima says. I um, try to convince them by showing them that I have the knowledge, I have the experience, I can actually take those decisions. Um, and that is the, that's the things that make you feel better actually too. <laughs> And that's also, I would say, the fun side about it, because it sometimes can be a very surprise moment for mm -hmm. people sure. who have actually another opinion. Sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. For my part, I would uh, like to re recommend you a book uh, which covers the topic impression management and competency perception. I don't remember the title anymore, but I read it uh, some years ago and yeah. It works. <laughs> and yeah, I will send you the link afterwards. Yeah, that would be nice. You can share it. Yeah. Um, there is another question, actually, which is uh, quite interesting. If uh, any of you uh, have used your female role, um, like for somehow manipulating men or, for example, in getting additional help or something to be maybe yeah in some situation that you used it um very consciously i mean that's the question <laughs> that's a tricky one yeah because on the one side you want to be independent <laughs> and yeah. on the other side you're asking for i mean obviously it's okay to ask for help if you want help but um it's tricky to put it onto this um, role perception of being a female. Yeah, I would rather separate it from this role perception, rather say it's about using your own strengths and skills to achieve yeah. your goals. Yeah, and you, you can ask for help, you can give help, but that's genderless. It has nothing to do with women or men. You know, and as you grow in your career, you would need less and less help. It has absolutely nothing to do with being a woman. So, um, well, the follow-up question is also now coming and asking about uh, what do you think is a, an advantage of being a woman versus being a male leader? And um, yeah, do you have examples of situations where you have the experience uh, from your experience uh, where you see well it is actually an advantage um like this is the advantage of being a fe female leader uh versus or over a male leader 
I'm not quite sure whether it's it's directly an advantage, but I had um, um, one one um, situation where um, yeah you needed to have um, a softer approach, I would say. Um, and um, the, the the man presented a topic, and you could really feel in in the room that the others uh, got a bit aggressive. It was some kind of meeting with the works council. I mean, for Volkswagen, the works council is is a big issue. We we all know this. Um, they had they they have lots of um, say, and so in these meetings, um, I I made the um, the experience that it somehow helps if you present topics as as a as a woman because you 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 tend to have some kind of softer impression and then um they are not um, or, or the works council reacts um more positively um compared to maybe some kind of male um guy who is very very um yeah big and and has has a very um yeah dark voice um so somehow i, I got the feeling that it, it helps to be women in, in this kind of situation mm -hmm. and um, from the rec recruiting perspective the question is like what do you seek in a female candidate or if you talk to a candidate i mean connie you are definitely doing um maybe the others they can also think about what would you seek in a candidate in a female candidate if you recruit them well, actually, nothing else than I would seek in a male candidate. Thank you. Exactly. Is, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's about the skills and the experience that they bring to the table, much more than the gender. Obviously, with the diversity discussions that we have, I'm happy to look at female um, CVs. Um, and maybe I would be tempted to invite them for an interview a bit more likely than a male candidate but in the end for a position it's about the skill set mm. Absolutely. Yes. and being maybe authentic um, adding to this what we said before like not uh, doing as if you would have other characteristic characteristics um, would you think suit into private equity or it or research or whatever but just be authentic and then it's not about female and male anymore and this is the important thing that's definitely, definitely good advice, I would say. Um, another question goes a little bit into that direction, like being authentic. Uh, I mean, we talked a lot now about, uh, about strength and being strong and um, yeah, being a leader. Um, but how do you deal with weaknesses? And um, do you train them like that you, that you try to get less weaknesses? Or um, how do you deal with situations that directly yeah affect these weaknesses what would you say i had a really good career advice earlier on in my career where someone told me focus on your strengths and not on your weaknesses everyone has weaknesses and you can work your mm -hmm, behind off <laughs> to get rid of them but you should focus on your strengths you have your strengths you find them and you make the best out of them it's much more rewarding to take it that way than the other way around. That I add good. to this, and I actually had an HHL experience where I also got this um, this advice, Connie. So I know in one of I think it was even the very first week I was at HHL, we had a course. I'm not sure how it was called anymore, but it was about testing your characteristics and then you got everything in, in a spider chart and yeah. I had like one or two very strong components and I thought like I didn't focus on oh I'm so great in those two components I was like okay I have four or five components I have to work on where I'm, where I'm very weak and the professor told me then your profile is actually that's what we are what yeah what we are looking for kind of strengthen your strength have have one two three particular strength but you don't have to have a everything. yeah you don't have to be good in everything and that's the important thing yeah actually nobody is good at everything and that's the hr job right is to put the right teams together so your your strengths are good enough and you will you will complement somebody other's strengths and and they will complement your weaknesses and and this is how a great, a great team is built. You don't have to worry about 
not being the most extrovert person on earth, it's perfectly okay. You know, somebody else will do that. It's, it's fine. You have other things to focus on. Yeah, there's another question regarding the strengths, actually specific for Connie. Um, what unique strengths can women um, take on an investment banking or private equity roles in order to stand out from their male counterparts? Well, I would say it's probably a bit what Caroline said before, it's on emotional intelligence. That is something that is often underrepresented, so to say, in uh, pure male teams. Um, so that would be something that, um, that is helpful. I, my experience is that the entire environment changes once there's a woman at the table. Um, men behave much better than um, without, it is getting less aggressive. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something that you add. But um, other than that, you still need to be good at everything else um, that the men are good at because that's just how the cookie crumbles, right? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, time wise, we are actually already towards the end. Um, maybe there's one. If, if you if you want, I, I'm happy to take one other question to finish before we finish. Um, and it's actually about the point of, um, first of all, in Germany, we have this gendering in language. Um, so always talking about, uh, yeah, female and male uh, part of, of the person like uh, Mitarbeiter, Mitarbeiterinnen. Um, do you think that this is some kind of signal or not, or that should be used? And the second thing into that direction is um, to what extent should women actually speak up if they sense some kind of discrimination? I, I mean, it can only be your personal opinion on that. So um, I would say definitely always speak up if you see something going wrong because that's the only way things will change if everyone just shuts up and no one says anything then nothing will change yeah um yeah i i i, I totally agree um also um sometimes may or, or or men they just don't know um that in that specific situation they did something wrong they sometimes just don't know it so you, you have to yeah tell them, okay, um, th this was maybe not so cool. Maybe next time you could do it like this and this. And they, they can also learn because sometimes they, they just don't see it. True. Okay. Um, yeah, I think uh, we more or less answered all the questions from the audience. Thank you very much for raising them and also to, yeah, to to, for us to, to discuss these. And um, I'm very happy and thankful for all the insight you gave us and from different kind of views, from uh, fields and um, career levels. And um, I think it's a huge um, input and it's a very valuable for all our students, um, alumni also, and, and other participants just to just to hear that discussion and to, to get something out. And I think if everyone uh, of us just takes out one single piece of that, it, it will already be helpful for us. And um, I think uh, every one of us can, can refer to that quite in, in any kind of aspects. So um, yeah, I'm very, very thankful to all of you. Thank you for the audience um, that you came here. We are a little bit over time today. But uh, I think it was worth to take on some more questions. So um, yes, thank you very much. And also, I think um, for the alumni, if uh, the, the audience have questions, um, I know that the alumni circle is always quite close in contact with either the career department or also the alumni. So I think there is also possibility to to raise further questions or get in contact on that if you want to. Maybe Martina, you want to close something? 
Yeah, thank you also for my part. I really feel happy at the end of the evening because you mentioned a lot of aspects which we teach uh, in the curriculum uh, right now. And so, yeah, thank you. It was amazing for me that you really agreed in a lot of topics. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. And have a nice evening. And uh, yeah, maybe in, we will, I mean, alumni talks, they will definitely continue. Uh, we already thought about as the, um, yeah, there were quite some people asking for this kind of setting also to do it specific for women or on specific topics. You might also continue with that um, maybe beginning of next year just to, to renew some ideas or to talk on some other aspects of that. So um, yeah, with women at HHL, I'm also happy to provide with some other um, events or currently everything is online. So while talking and uh, these talks or panel discussions are obviously a very good uh, format to share. And um, yeah, I think uh, we will definitely get you let you know if there's anything coming up further thank you very much and you have much. a nice evening thank you everyone thank you. Bye. 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 bye have a nice evening bye bye, bye, -bye.